Hello, my name is Mike Lombardo, CEO of GlideFast Consulting. Today, I want to give you some tips on how to have a successful ServiceNow implementation. Quick little background on myself. I've been in the ServiceNow space a little over 10 years now. I actually started out as a ServiceNow customer, was a customer of a partner, then moved on to the consulting space. And about six years ago, 2015, started GlideFast Consulting. So I'll jump right into it. So a little background on GlideFast. We're an elite ServiceNow partner focusing on ServiceNow implementations and helping customers succeed and get the most value out of the platform. So jumping right into it. Number one, I think the most important thing is really getting executive sponsorship. So really, you know, having your senior leaders, letting the rest of the staff and employees and team members know this is the platform we're moving to. We're moving our legacy processes out of email, out of legacy systems. We're adopting service now, and this is the platform we're going to use, right? We also need executive leadership to clear roadblocks, increase morale, right? And acceptance of this new technology. A lot of people are afraid of change historically. We like using the, the you know, our old ways of doing it for years and years and years, but Digital transformation is crucial to the success of businesses now. So I think it's important not only for executive leadership to be involved and, and send the message that this is, you know, how the organization is moving, but also keep people calm, right? That this is not a project or initiative to eliminate jobs. It's to eliminate the swivel chair activities. And that right off the bat, I think is number one, most important part of an implementation. Number two. I think it's important to crawl, walk, run. So not just, you know, going, trying to go from zero to hero and trying to do all this automation and talking about, you know, artificial intelligence and, and going from zero to hero, right? We need to step into this platform. We need to step into digital transformation. And that doesn't mean you're not going to get ROI. And that doesn't mean you can't adopt and adapt a lot of the platform immediately day one, but it's, it's setting your expectations to be successful, right? So if you have expectations that we're going to go from a maturity level of zero or one, and, and all of a sudden service now is going to solve all these problems, you likely won't be successful, right? You need to, you know, what I like to call fail fast, right? So Sometimes you don't know what you don't know until you see it, until you try, until you use it. So it's important to set the expectations of an achievable level, implement those, use those, and continue to innovate and continue to improve your processes. One thing that's different with ServiceNow and other processes and other technologies is those other technologies, you know, historically you implement and you're done and you walk away, right? The ServiceNow journey and the platform and your processes are never done because your business is never done, right? There's always new processes coming up. There's always opportunities to improve those existing processes and add more automation and add a better user experience or better user interface. So, you know, it's really important to know as well that service now is never done. You're never, there, there's an end date to a project or, you know, a phase of that project, but it's always important to know what's next. Always think about what is next. Number three, solve for the 80%, not the 20%, right? There's always going to be during these workshops and discussions there's always going to be in planning of the project and how we're going to use ServiceNow, what we're going to use it for and what the processes are going to look like and the workflows. And there's always going to be some conflict, right? There's always going to be people that want it one way and then there's some other people who want another way. Well, it's important to have some context. Okay, majority of our staff can use the workflow this way and this achieves 80% of our user base are going to get exactly what they want. And when you focus on in the 20%, you know, you need a plan. Here's how we can address the 20%. They may have to modify the way they've been doing it or the way they will do it. Right. So you're never going to get a bullseye every time and make every single, you know, group 
in your in your organization or user base or customer base, you're never going to get a hundred percent of everyone being happy and exactly what they want. So there's there's definitely a level of compromise that needs to be factored in, and just needs to be decisions need to be made. Exactly, and that's why another going back to to number one, executive leadership making those decisions, and again thinking for the eighty percent, not the twenty. Number four, marrying the technology and the process. This is really important because, you know, we used to say all the time, you know, the, the technology is not going to fix a broken process, right? So if you have a broken process and you're not evaluating those processes and ma- making sure you're maximizing them to the best efficiency levels, service now is not going to fix again, fix everything, right? So you really have to focus on a good process, but also you can't have a process that's in cement either, right? You have to be flexible and maybe modify the process a little bit to how the technology service now, how some of those, some of those processes work, right? You don't want to do something that's unnatural, right? And again, if we, if there's a compromise where we can make a little adjustment to the process to fit to how the technology works, that's okay too, right? So it's got to really work both ways. It's not just a one-way street for a process, you know, rules all or the technology rules all. It's definitely a two-way street. Number five, make sure you're getting input from the user community. This is really important. The people that are actually going to use the product. So if we're talking about something as simple as an incident management implementation, getting feedback from the help desk staff, getting feedback from the the people using, you know, your power users, the ones that are submitting tickets and incidents for uh, their group or floor, right? And getting their feedback and input. And, and because again, they're the ones using it, right? Sometimes management is great at management, but hands on the keyboards, really knowing what the true experience is or the desired experience for the users and the people that are actually going to be using the platform the most is a little disconnected. So it's really important to make sure we have the right audience making these decisions and giving their feedback and input, right? They don't actually, they don't have to be the ones making decisions. Typically, we don't want them the ones making decisions, but we want their input. We want their feedback. We want to understand what their life is like and what their desired life is like. Thank you for your time today. That's all I have. If you want to find out more information about GlideFast and our ServiceNow implementation services, you can reach out to us at info at glidefast.com. 